parts that I like that I don't want to cover over. Then I realize I'm being too precious. I just have to go over them. <laughs> like this one, I didn't expect it to be so um, opaque. I was hoping it would be a little bit more transparent. When I start a painting, like this scale, this size, I don't want to spend time working on the background. So I just try to like cover the canvas with paint. Doesn't matter, it's random. With maybe the, the values and colors that I'm gonna lean towards or, or maybe get stronger on top of. Um, and, and a lot of times it's just a series of experiments and, and trying out stuff and then covering it up later. So, it, you know, sometimes depending on how excited I am about what I'm doing, I forget the steps I'm supposed to take in order to make it easier for myself. So then I end up making too much work, <laughs> making my work harder. But, um, but I like this one, how it's going right now. Because I like to leave a lot of bare canvas and somehow I ended up with a lot of empty canvas here with little bits of color coming through. So I can like reinsert these figures again on top of that. So I came to Joan Mitchell with a specific intention of trying to capture something really quintessentially New Orleans in the figures and the bodies of the children. Like how can I translate something of what's being lost in this culture through imagery of the kids? And I think I did in some way with one image of um, kids at Super Sunday in Black Mardi Gras outfits and, and costume. But for the most part, I think it's really hard to, to capture this, this elusive thing I was looking for because New Orleans is such a secretive society. There's so many layers that you have to kind of get through and there's so much dark history here that people aren't willing to just give it up easily. So I think I just scraped the surface. I just got a, like a touch of what's going on here. Um, and I think it's such a really damaged place that people don't wanna, they're not open. There, there's this whole pretense of, of openness with all the festivals and the joviality and you know all of that. But I think it's, people here are very guarded. Um, so I did a lot of reading before I came here about New Orleans trying to figure out where I could find the kind of imagery that I was looking for. Um, and one of the books I've read since I've been here is On to New Orleans. It's about the slave revolt of, I think, 1820-something. I, I might have the dates wrong, but it's the largest slave, slave revolt in um, the United States that no one's ever heard of because they just, uh, the victors crushed the, the revolt and you know, they didn't want anybody else to know that slaves could actually do that, so they, they destroyed the history of it. But um, Dred Scott is gonna be doing a reenactment of it in November of this year, and I'm interested in seeing how that plays out. But I think, you know, working with Yaya, getting some images of kids there, and um, just walking around, trying to get kids in City Park at a, like some of the images that I got are from kids who were out playing at a um, block party. And then one of the most iconic images I got is a group of kids from Lincoln Beach on the last day of their 12 week or 10 week summer camp where they were all learning how to swim. And that one's really resonating with me and I've made a couple of prints of it. And I've also gotten more interested in black beaches and how much they were a part of life during Jim Crow and how quickly they all were abandoned after integration was allowed because black people didn't want to go to those random, you know, faraway places that the beaches were usually located and they wanted to go where the white people were. So that's a whole another phenomenon that I hadn't even thought about. That's, that's pretty cool. Interesting to maybe get some work doing, going in that direction. I don't know.